So today I will show you how to get a cinematic color grading in DaVinci Resolve 18. One of the most important things before you even start shooting is lighting. So lighting can make a huge difference because when you add the color grade to different clips with different lighting, they will all look very different. But getting the right lighting is very difficult, especially when you're outside and you can't control the light outside, so that's pretty difficult. So as you can see, I've got a few different clips in this timeline, all with a little bit of different lighting, but all shot outside, so I didn't have much control of the lighting. So this clip is from the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K in Blackmagic RAW. These two clips are shot in my custom S-Log profile on the Sony ZV-E10. By the way, you can find my custom S-Log profile in my last video, the Sony ZV-E10 versus iPhone 12 video. And the last clip is in Rec. 709 on the Panasonic G7. First we need to convert the log footage to a normal looking image, so that's Rec. 709. So for that I move everything so that we have more space. And with Option or Alt S you make a new node. Last time I didn't mention it, so now I'm mentioning all the shortcuts I'm using. So then we go to the Effects tab and add Color Space Transform to the second node. So this is Blackmagic Design Pocket 4K Film Generation 4. And input Gamma is Pocket 6K Film Gen 4. And output color space is of course Rec. 709 and the same for Gamma. So now I move this one at the end. Now I click on this clip and press Command C or Control C on Windows. And with Control or Command V, I add it to the other clips, only those two, because only those three clips need to be converted to Rec. 709. But of course we need to change everything here. Output can stay the same because we want to have it in Rec. 709. But input color space. In this case it's Rec. 709 because it's my custom profile. And input gamma is S-Log2. And now I can copy it again and paste it on this clip because this one's the same. So in this case some clips need some adjustments. In this case we need to adjust the white balance. It's way too cold or way too blue. So I will start naming the node. So in this case it's white balance. Second node will be exposure. And the third one will be for look. And then with option P or Alt P. We make a par parallel node. It's basically the same as when they're next to each other, but it looks better in my opinion. I don't know exactly what they're doing. This one is for the hue, and I think that's it. This one is CST, color space transform. So this is the node tree I made on all those clips, except for this one. We gotta handle this clip a little bit different, so that's for later. So now we'll make some exposure adjustments first before we start with the white balance. So I will start pulling the offset wheel down, which is basically the overall brightness of the image. That looks way better. Now we can start making white balance adjustments. So for that, I instead of using the temperature and tint wheel, which you can also use, I'm using the offset wheel. And I pull it to the warm side a little bit. Maybe even a little bit more to the red because there's a bit, little bit of green in it. And I know in this case it's the sunset, so it's okay when it's a little bit more on the warm side. And I think even that looks pretty good. So we go to this clip. First exposure, pull it down a bit. Make the parade a little bit brighter. It looks fine. Maybe a little bit on the blue side, but just a little bit. Before and after. Before white balance, after white balance, that looks fine. So here, pull down the exposure again. And that increases the contrast, so that's pretty good that we, that we changed the exposure. White balance, I think that's fine, so we let it stay like that. So since everything is done, we can start color grading now. And I think we start with this clip. So when I think of cinematic, I imagine a very contrasty teal and orange look. So that's what we're going for. So we go to the hue node, go to the hue versus hue curve and click on everything so that we have some points that we can change. And now we start pulling the hue around so that we get a teal and orange look. So yellow up, green down a little bit so that we still have some dark greens and not only the warm greens that are yellow now. Of course we pull up the blue so it gets teal and I think that's fine for the hue adjustments. Maybe the saturation, hue versus saturation, so we make a few points here again and then we pull up the saturation so it's stronger. Now we go to the look node. And I think we will start with the primary wheels. First we pull down the lift, which is basically the shadow area of the image. 
not too much. Then we pull up the gamma to the warm side. Pull down the lift again. So we get a little bit of complementary colors, which basically means that we have a lot of color separation. And since this was shot at the sunset, I think this look will be a little bit more on the warm side. So I will use the offset wheel for that. So we got more of a warm look. And to counter that, we pull down the lift again a little bit. And now the black point is off. So we go to the log wheel and counter that with the shadow wheel, which is basically the exact black point. Just a little bit. Maybe pull down the lift wheel even more. We can even increase the contrast a bit so that we get more contrast. That's before we even start color grading. So this is the Rec 709 core version, just with the corrections, and this is the look. Now I click on the look node, Command C or Control C, and go here and paste it on the look node here. Then hue node here, click on it, Command C again, and with Command V or Control V, we add it here. And as you can see, we need to make some adjustments because the red is too strong in my opinion. And maybe we push the blue a little bit more on the teal side than on the blue side. It looks a little bit too magenta in my opinion. So we might want to start with that. And pull down the lift. And I pull the lift to the teal area instead of the blue area a little bit more. Then we go to the hue node. And I will make a point here. Pull it down a bit. And pull this point around, pull up the green a little bit more because this green is already pretty green. So we could make it a little bit more warm and we still have that dark green area. And that looks pretty good in my opinion. So this is before the conversion. This is just a correction and this is the color grading. And now we can copy the look node again and paste it right here on this clip. Go here with the hue again and paste it on the hue node here. So basically we copied the color grading and in my opinion that looks pretty good. And as you can see, it's not that much work, but we still got a pretty good look and we can copy this look and paste it on all the other clips. And if you shoot with this custom profile all the time and you want to use this grade, you can even go to the gallery, right click and add power grade album. And then you right click on this picture, grab still, and now you got your color grading saved for all your projects in DaVinci Resolve. And now even when you're in a different project in DaVinci Resolve, you can access this color grade and apply it to your clips that you're using. So now we will deal with this Rec. 709 clip. For that we make a new node with Option S again, or Alt S on Windows again. And Parallel Node, Alt P or Option P. And then I will start naming them. Balance, Look and Hue. So first we start with the Hue. The same again, we make a few points at the hue versus hue curves, pull up the blue so that we get a little bit of teal and pull up the yellows a little bit but make a point here because we got skin in this footage and you have to be pretty careful with skin. So we gotta pull it down, maybe pull up the green a little bit, you can see it in the background a little bit. And now we go to the look node and then we change the clip so that we uh, see everything a little bit better. And then I pull down the lift to the teal area. And pull up the gamma a little bit to the warm area. Pull down the lift a little bit more. And now if you want to have proper blacks, we pull up the shadow the opposite direction of the lift so that we have the right black point can even mess around with the downrange so the area the shadow wheel is affecting so that we only affect the darkest points that looks pretty good in my opinion so that's before and that's after and that looks pretty good now you can see you can even color grade rec 709 footage it's pretty easy in my opinion but you can't get every look with it because it's already so contrasty and saturated so you can't play around with that too much so that's it with this video. Thanks for watching and see you guys in the next video.